Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Hamali and I talk about all the things that nobody wants to talk about while I do my makeup. I switched up my cat ears today for deer antlers and I'm like obsessed. I think they're so cute. Before I begin with this video, I just want to remind you guys that I did apply for Sephora Squad and I would really, really appreciate it if you could take the time to leave me a testimonial. Your testimonials is what will help me get onto the Sephora Squad and it's been a dream of mine. I've left the link in the description below. All you need to do is click on it and write a three. 150 character testimonial. It's super quick, super easy, shouldn't take you more than five minutes to do, and it would just honestly mean so much to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting me, and now let's get to yapping. In today's video, I'm going to be responding to a question that one of my followers had asked me, and the question is, what's something that no one tells you about marriage that you wish you'd known beforehand? So I'm going to share with you the three things I wish I knew before I got married. The first thing I wish I knew is that marriage does not solve all your problems. Now, like many Nissi South Asian girls, I've been told all my life, you can do that once you're married. Honestly, hearing that pissed me off so freaking much. Cause like, why do I need to be married to be able to travel or become a makeup artist or just do random shit? Like what does being married to a man have to do with any of those things? And to be honest, whenever my parents did tell me this, there was a lot of times where I would fight back and just kind of do whatever I wanted. But there was also a point where I was just so sick and tired of it. Like I was so sick and tired of constantly having to fight for my freedom and ability to be able to make decisions and do things. Recently, I found this old Snapchat video that Bikra made of me. And in the video, all I'm saying is, I'm sad because I want to be married. How are you today? Sad. Why? You know why? No, I don't. Tell me. Because I'm not married. Honestly, looking back at that video, I was probably like 24, 25, and I was just so naive. I think I was just really desperate to get out of a toxic environment at home that I thought marriage would solve that problem and lead me to more freedom and I guess just like not having to deal with the relationship that I had with my parents at the time. Like at that point in my life, me and my parents just didn't really get along and I wanted nothing more than to be out of my house. And it's really sad because I know a lot of South Asian girls can relate to this. Like we're so desperate to leave a toxic environment at home that now we view marriage as an escape or like as a ticket to our freedom versus the responsibility and the commitment that it really is. As much as I love my husband and I would get married to him again, looking back at it, I definitely think at the time I was going into marriage for some of the wrong reasons. And like I said, it honestly makes me sad. I don't think I was actually ready to get married when I did. Technically, I was supposed to get married at 27, but then COVID happened. And so I ended up getting married at 28, but I was definitely not ready for it then. COVID was like kind of a blessing and a curse because we moved in together right before COVID hit. Like we moved in together about, I would say like six, 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 oh, I can't even speak six ish months before we were supposed to get married in 2020. So we moved to, in together in like September of 2019. And then COVID hit like three weeks before our wedding. We ended up living together for a good, almost like two years before we ended up actually getting married. And it was definitely a blessing in disguise because it gave us an opportunity to live together, understand how we work together, and pretty much like live out what a marriage would have looked like without actually being married. And I think that was so important important to do because it made me realize that what marriage actually is and the idea that we're sold of marriage are two very different things. And so I think there was a lot of growing up we kind of did in that time period. And I think that was the first time I really started to like discover myself and understand what I needed and wanted in a relationship. Like that was like the very, very beginning of it. And it still took years after that to really get to a point in our marriage where I felt like, yes, this is the marriage that I want. I say that not because like I hated being married to Vikra, but like there was a lot of difficult times we went through because we both grew up in pretty toxic environments. You know, we both came from immigrant families. They had their own values. They were pretty strict. They were pretty traditional. And oftentimes when you come from that type of environment, you grow up witnessing unhealthy like relationships, unhealthy marriages especially. And so when we moved out, I noticed that we were almost like reliving our parents' marriages. And that was something that 
I don't know, that was a real big shock to me. Personally, I started therapy in like May or June of 2020. And that's when I really began to realize that me leaving my parents' home didn't necessarily mean that I was leaving a toxic environment. Because even though I was physically gone from that toxic environment, the toxic environment had followed me. Like it had made a room in my head and lived there rent free. And it really hit me then that you know, moving out, getting married, whatever, wasn't necessarily a solution to my problems. I was actually just running away from my problems. What I was really doing now was recreating the toxic environment that was at my parents' house just in a new way in my own home. And Vigor was doing the same in his own way too. So it was like the two of us being in our own toxic ways, creating this like chaos shit storm in our own home that was just super unhealthy. I'm so happy that I started therapy when I did because I don't think I would have caught on how bad it was if I hadn't really like sought out that professional help. And because we were able to catch on to these things and work through them, we were lucky enough to now create a healthy environment within our home. But honestly, that took some time. And I'm very fortunate and grateful and privileged to have gone down that path. Like, I know not everyone can afford therapy or mental health services. And luckily I was in a position where I could and I could get that help and we could fix this toxic environment that we were creating. But I know not a lot of people have that ability. What makes me really sad though is a lot of these women will go into marriage thinking it's an escape, just like I had, but find themselves in a new and improved like toxic environment. And it's honestly harder to get out than like moving away from your parents because now you're like in this legally binding contract, you're married to someone, it's not just easy to up and leave. Again, like that could have very easily been me and thankfully it wasn't, but I know a lot of women have found themselves in that position. It makes me so frustrated that we're so desperate for women to get married that it doesn't matter if it leads them into an abusive situation. There's so much more emphasis put on the woman getting married than her actual health and well-being and that's just Honestly, so messed up. If you're going through this currently, my best advice to you is move out on your own if you can. And if you can't afford it on your own, like find a roommate or something, but don't just get married so that you can escape your house. It's not going to help you if anything, it's actually going to make the healing process a lot harder. I'm very grateful and blessed to have had a husband that was willing to grow with me and go through the hardships of like figuring out our mental health and figuring out our traumas. But, you know, not everyone is like that. And so you could very much find yourself in an abusive relationship that you'll feel stuck in. And what you'll learn when you do move out is that toxic environment that you lived in at home will follow you into whatever other environment you place yourself in. But the advantage of being on your own is that you're able to kind of heal and work through that in peace versus like being in the toxic environment that created that shit storm in your head in the first place. You can't heal in the same environment that made you sick, you know what I mean? And more so than marriage, being able to live on my own is what really helped to mend my relationship with my parents and get me into a better headspace. Marriage I think actually made it harder because me and Vikra were going through that shit storm of figuring out our mental health at the same time. So like, again, we were going through our toxic cycles together, which, you know, we were creating trauma for each other at this point too. Like not only have we lived through the trauma of our homes, but like now we were creating this new environment where we're creating trauma for each other. And so my advice to you is like, figure that shit out as much as you can before entering something like a marriage. Because what I've learned is if you've grown up in an unhealthy environment where you watched like toxic relationships unfold, toxic marriages unfold, then you are going to be recreating those relationships in your marriage. Whether you like it or not, it's gonna happen in new and improved ways. And you may not even be able to notice it because it's been so normalized in your head that you're almost like in your comfort zone. Like you, that's what you know, that's what makes you feel safe. Even though it's not safe, it's what you know. And so um, it can be really hard to catch that you're going down that path. and. Before you know it, like you'll just be reliving your parents' marriage or reliving that toxic environment that you once had at home that you were trying to escape. And 
it's, it's just not gonna be fun. It's not gonna be fun. That's all. <laughs> like I said, I wish I knew marriage was not an escape. I just happened to be in a very fortunate position where things worked out for me, but it's not always like that for everyone. Moving on, the second thing I wish I knew before getting married is that you don't just marry the person, you marry the family. And I've talked about this saying before because this is advice that my parents gave me all the time before getting married. Honestly, I just like didn't understand it. I took it so literally. To be fair, I feel like they explained it to me really literally too. And for them back in the day, that really did make sense. Like your family was very heavily involved in your marriage back in the day because oftentimes like you might have lived with your in-laws or, you know, back in the day, I think people were just a little bit more family oriented, especially if you were like back home in like in India or something like that. But here, it's not so much like that, you know? We don't tend to live with our parents as much. And oftentimes we're not even living in like close proximity to our family. So they're not as heavily involved. At least that's like my case or like the case for a good amount of people. So in my head, I'm like, whatever. Like if we have to see his family or my family once in a while on special occasions and whatever, like that's not that big of a deal. But like on a day-to-day -day basis, like it's gonna be me and him. Like we're the only ones that are going to be dealing with our problems and moving through life together. Like it has nothing to do with the family. Boy was I wrong because i took it so literally i didn't realize that there is like a deeper wisdom to it and obviously i realized that after i had gotten married and done a lot of therapy now that i've lived with my husband for five years and been married for three i've come to understand what that phrase really means no matter how much your family's partner is involved physically in your guys's lives their family history lives within them. You could be like a million miles away and literally never see their family, but that family's DNA, values, morals, personality, like way of life all lives within your partner. So when you marry someone, you're technically inheriting all the good and bad that comes with the family, the generational wealth and wisdom, and the generational poverty, ignorance, and struggles. When you marry someone, you become one. Whatever they have, you own now too, and I don't just mean physically. I also mean like mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And so that's really, really important to recognize when choosing a partner. I now totally get why my parents were so concerned with who the family was and if my husband came from a good family. I think a lot of South Asian parents are like, that like they want to know the family and I get it I get why now because so much of like who that person is is a reflection of what their family is like I don't necessarily agree with um, how they go about it because I think the way they look at the family is very surface level so I don't think you could always get a good understanding of what the family is like until you really immerse yourself in them I think the way South Asian people are they don't ever make it obvious that, you know, they come from a broken home or that things are bad. Like you could come from a, what looks like on the outside, very good family, but on the inside is a very broken home. And I think that's really hard to determine unless you know the people on like a deeper level. I feel like with South Asian parents, they really just know like, oh, they've met them. They're nice. Oh, they're wealthy. Like it's fine. They'll be able to take care of my daughter. They don't really look into like, Oh, are they emotionally abusive? Are they physically abusive? And honestly, there's not even like really a way to know that unless you're in the relationship or unless you know the family or partner, your partner well enough. But yeah, I found that really interesting because like I mentioned before, when me and Vikra first moved in together, it felt like we were mishmashing our traumas together. Like and we were just creating a new level of trauma. And don't get me wrong, there was a lot of good that also came out of it. Like there was a lot of good values and stuff like that that we made sure to emphasize and nurture and really bring to light. But there was a lot of other bad qualities that we had both inherited that we needed to heal from and break free from that generational trauma. And I think that's really important to recognize. It's not always going to be just generational trauma or generational ignorance, whatever it is. Like there is going to be good in there too. And you really do need to take the time to nurture those qualities and put more emphasis on it and heal the ones that no longer serve you guys. Because sometimes the qualities that are now trauma responses were once survival mechanisms. They did work at some point in time and they served their purpose, but as you get older um, and you're trying to create a safer environment for yourself, 
they no longer serve you and actually harm you more than anything. So you need to recognize that and clean it all up. And once we went through that process, kind of, you know, healed from our generational traumas, it actually brought us closer to our families. And I think now both me and my husband have a way better relationship with our parents and our families than we did before. I mean, our families are still the way they are, you know what I mean? Like, unless they do their own healing, they're not going to change but the generational trauma that had been passed on to us no longer affects us in the way it used to and it doesn't interfere in our marriage anymore finally the last thing i wish i knew before getting married is i wish i knew myself i think a lot of us grow up in a culture and society where we're taught who we're expected to be and we're not given much leeway or encouragement to do any type of self-reflection to understand truly who we are and who we want to be especially as women i think there is so much pressure put on us to aspire to be a wife and a mother that no one actually allows us to question um whether or not we want to be a wife or a mother and if we do like what are we looking for in a partner that would work well for us and our personality and the way we want to live life like i said before there's so much emphasis put on finding a husband that it doesn't matter if the woman's health or well-being is put into danger around 28 when i was about to get married is actually when i really started to discover myself i thought i knew who i was before that but i had no idea who i was i realized at that point after about a year of going to therapy that a lot of what i knew about myself was a lie and i had just formed my needs wants um boundaries and personality based off of what I had been taught and like my survival mechanisms. So at 28 is really when I started to discover like who I actually was. And honestly, it was really a shock because it was very different than who I thought I was. And the girl that Vikram met at 22 is not even remotely close to the person I am today. I will say this till the end of time. I know I was in a very fortunate position where I had a husband that was willing to grow with me and love all these different versions of myself that I had become in our nine-year relationship. I know there's a lot of people that kind of go through this self-discovery later in life and their partner has a hard time accepting that and the relationship just doesn't last. But yeah, in my late 20s going into my early 30s is when I really discovered who I was. Like prior to that, no one had asked me like, what I wanted and what I needed and what my boundaries were. Sharing these newfound parts of yourself with your partner is not always easy. Like it definitely can cause a rift in your relationship. I've obviously talked about how I'm grateful that my husband was willing to grow with me, but that growth was not easy. It was very painful and required a lot of conversations and a lot of heartbreak. It wasn't like, oh yeah, I'm just going to communicate what my needs, wants, boundaries are and poof, the next day he's like a changed man. He's doing all those things and he's exactly exactly the man I need. Like, no, we had to go through very difficult conversations and actually repeating a lot of toxic cycles as well in order to get to where we are today, which is in a healthy relationship. And there was discoveries that I made about myself at a later age, like, for example, whether or not I wanted to have kids, that can be very much a make or break situation if you want to marry somebody. And that was something I didn't even question until my late 20s, early 30s. And now I'm in a position where I'm like, well, do I want kids? Do I not want kids? And that's always been like a really difficult conversation between me and my husband because he's always wanted kids. And now I'm discovering this part of myself that's like after everything I've been through with my PMDD, with my period problems, all that stuff, I'm like, is that something I really wanna put my body through? You know, these are things that I was never able to really question or understand when I was younger or before I had done any type of self-reflection. I wish like these were things that I knew before getting into marriage and like committing to somebody. You know, I think that's fair for the other person to know because it does affect them on a day-to-day -day basis. Getting to know my myself helps me understand like what I require in a partner as well so I should feel like my partner is able to deliver those things before I commit to them now I think throughout a marriage or a relationship you and your partner are going to see 
many, many different versions of yourself. And if you and your partner can't grow at the same rate and give grace in situations where you are going through growth periods, then you're not really going to last. Like who I am today is not going to be who I am 10 years from now. And I hope and pray that my husband loves all those different versions of me as I go on this journey of getting older with him. And as you get older, you will always be discovering yourself and learning new things about yourself. Your needs and wants and boundaries will forever be changing. I guess you could say if you're constantly growing into different versions of yourself, why would it even matter if you discover yourself before you get married? Because you're gonna change anyways. Technically that's true, but what I mean by that is who I was before I got married wasn't my authentic self. I was operating as someone I was told to be by society, by my parents, by my environment. I wasn't ever operating from my authentic self. And I think it's very important for women to discover their authentic self, their actual needs and wants and boundaries, not the one that society gives us, because it's very easy to get lost in a marriage. And so it's really important to do that inner work and genuinely know yourself because now you can grow in a marriage from a place of authenticity rather than like what you've been told. Because another thing that can happen is when you get married, you can very much fall into a performance and act from a place of like doing what you're, you've been taught your whole life and moving through your marriage as a wife and or mother, performing the way society expects you to and not how you authentically want to show up. And so yeah, you can very much get lost in that. And yes, you can grow and come into your authentic self like I did um, while you're in a marriage, but a big part of that is based on who you're married to and the environment that you guys are creating because if you're marrying a person that isn't in that growth mindset or doesn't want to see you thrive and wants to stay in the low vibrations then you're not going to end up growing into your authentic self or you might you might have that wake up call but it'll be like much later in life and that's not a position you want to be in when you're in your like 40s or 50s or 60s like it's important for you to discover that stuff about yourself now before you get into marriage and then to find a partner that aligns with those needs and wants and boundaries and then as you're growing into these different versions of yourself it's easier for your partner um, to love and understand and grow and give you grace in that journey because you're not doing this like random switch up. I feel like my switch up was like a big 180 from who I was at like 22 that it might have changed how Vikra felt about me it had he met me later in life. I don't know. All I know is that I lucked out and he he grew with me. And now all these different versions he sees of myself as we get older will always come from an authentic place rather than a place of performance and doing what was, I guess, expected of me um, by society standards. And I feel safe enough to show up in my relationship in a genuine, authentic way and communicate my needs, wants, and boundaries without feeling like scared or stupid or like I'm not gonna be heard. So my biggest advice to anyone watching is really take the time to discover who you are. Do that inner reflection, journal, go to therapy, meditate, like whatever it takes. Really discover who you are, how you wanna show up as a partner and what you expect your partner to show up as before you're entering a marriage and learn how to communicate those things because that was another problem I had. I had a really hard time with communication. I just didn't know how to communicate in a healthy way especially growing up in like a traditional immigrant household where, you know, we didn't talk about our feelings or anything like that. So knowing those things, knowing how to communicate them will really help make your marriage go a lot smoother. It'll help you find a partner that's actually suitable for you. It's okay if you take your time to get married. Like don't feel like your life is over if you haven't been married by 30. I really hate how society puts so much pressure on women to get married young and you know, puts out this rhetoric that if you don't get married before 30, then you're expired. I think it's just a way of keeping women submissive. And so many of us fall for it because it's what we've been taught since we were young. So it's all we know. I think it's a way of really taking advantage of women's unpaid emotional and domestic labor within relationships. Because if you get married young, you're still naive and you can be like molded into this traditional wife, good wife, whatever it is, and just kind of do as you're told, especially from a young age, you've been taught like, 
you know, this is your duty as a wife to take care of the household, to keep the family together mentally, emotionally, all that stuff. And you know, it's like later in life, once women have gone through years and years of marriage, that this marriage that they've agreed to has just been taking advantage of them. I'm really proud of women in our generation that are starting to discover this at an earlier age and sharing this wisdom with the younger generation so that they don't fall into the same trap. And this is not to say like every single marriage is like this. And if you get married young, like that's going to be your fate. Everyone's marriage is different. So I can't say it's for all, but it is something I've seen that happens often and is very common. I just want to warn you not to fall into those traditional gender roles if it's not something you actually want or enjoy doing. Um, just because it's expected of you doesn't mean that you have to do it. You know, I think there's so much emphasis put on playing certain gender roles within a marriage when marriage is actually about playing off of each other's strengths and becoming equitable partners like maybe you don't do everything equally but there are areas that make more sense for one person to take care of than the other person and you have to play off those strengths and weaknesses sometimes that falls into your traditional gender roles and sometimes it doesn't and as you and your partner evolve into different versions of yourself it's okay for your roles and responsibilities within the relationship to also evolve so like for example maybe my husband is taking care of the finances right now but 10 years down the road, maybe I have a stronger um, understanding of finances. So maybe I start to take on that role 10 years from now. And that's okay. Marriages are not a one size fits all. It's not a gender role performance. It is about finding a partner that really works with you and is equitable. It's about finding a partner that you can genuinely go through life with. Because life is hard enough and the hardships that you endure should never be coming from within your relationship. It should always be a us against the world situation versus a me against you situation. And I don't think you can be in an us against the world position if you both don't know yourselves well enough because you'll be too busy clashing and butting heads with each other. You want a partner that you can rely on that is loyal that is trustworthy and that just makes life easier for you that when you wake up in the morning you're happy to see the person that is laying next to you and that you're excited to conquer the day with them anyways that's all the yapping I have left in me and this here is the final look I'll link all the products that I can in my LTK the link will be in the description below there's some products that I probably won't be able to link so I'll try to find some alternates for them but yeah I'm going to a Bridgerton themed birthday party tonight which is why I have this like frosty like mint colored eyeshadow because it matches perfectly with my Bridgerton outfit. I have to show you guys like a picture of how the whole look ended up coming together because I'm really really excited about it. Anyways that's all there is for me. If you have any questions or want to ask for advice or want me to talk about a topic in my next video let me know in the comments below or send me a DM on Instagram. I'll leave the link to my Instagram below in the description as well and please 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 do not forget to leave me a testimonial for Sephora squad. If you did like this video, leave me a thumbs up, a comment, share it with a friend. Any engagement really helps push this video out to more people that need to see it. And I just want to say thank you so much for all the love and support you guys constantly show me and I'll see you in my next get ready with me. Bye. Love you.